Welcome! Our discussion is going to be Geiger counters. In this series of web pages and videos, I'm going to discuss how they work, what they do, how to build them, circuit examples that you can build for yourself, and to make you aware in this case I've pulled the back cover off the tube to show you around in it. You have various circuitry that runs your LCD display, but this is over here is what's common to all of these these type Geiger counter circuits. It uses an oscillator and a step-up transformer, and you have a series of diodes and capacitors through here that are a voltage multiplier. Um, this looks like a quadrupler that probably puts out 125 volts or something peak whatever it steps the volt output voltage from the transformer is stepped up through a voltage multiplier circuit these here these silvery looking diodes are zener diodes and they are to regulate the output voltage which is the high voltage over here which should be around 500 volts. Here is your actual Geiger Muller tube. Here's the negative connection. That's your positive connection. If I lifted it up, you could see the mica window. Alright, what you're looking at now is a Weston Model 612 light intensity meter. This thing was, these were built in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. It uses a selenium photocell. A photocell. Before they had silicon photocells, they had selenium photocells to produce a voltage. And guess what? It still works. What has that got to do with a Geiger counter, right? Okay. The selenium has nothing to do with it, but notice something funny here. This lens lifts up. I'm going to bring my Geiger counter up to it. The glass lens is radioactive. In fact, you will find that a lot of uh, camera lenses, projector lenses, and stuff prior to the 1960s are radioactive. This is radioactive because they use thorium oxide in the glass. And it's been happily radioactive and still going after 60 years. Thorium has a half-life, I think, of 1.2 billion years. But what makes it interesting is many of the products that it breaks down into are more radioactive than the thorium is, including radium, polonium, and so forth. Now, a Geiger counter generally cannot tell you what type of radiation you're observing. But I can tell if, if much I know that um, thorium is an alpha emitter. So I'm going to do my paper trick again and see if I can shield the counter. Nope, not working at all this time, is it? In fact, let's try it here on the side. In fact, the radiation is still penetrating through the case, the side walls, and everything else. In addition to going through the micro win no, window. So a Geiger counter like this is handy for hunting around your home. I have, I have a rock collection. I have a friend at work who is a geologist that has a rock collection. I've went through my collection, his collection, 
and haven't found anything that has any measurable amount of radiation. But testing stuff around my house, I discovered this. Of course, we do not use thorium in lenses anymore. That's been outlawed since, since the 1970s. But a Geiger counter like this, while not the most highly... Ge Geiger counters are not the most accurate. They can give you a good idea what's going on. If you want to look at the total volume of this thing, I'm only reading part of the radiation that passes through this window for the most part. It's actually, if you're having to look at it, it's producing, if you go about the sides that don't pass through the window, and the sides in the back, I'm probably reading maybe a quarter of the actual radiation it's emitting. So there are some limitations on Geiger counters, but they're awful um, handy to have. And the rest of my video series, we're going to discuss how the tubes work, how, to, how the power supplies work. We're going to discuss various circuits to use with it, and hopefully we're going to use something like an Arduino to uh, count the pulses in the same way that this does. And the reason I bought this, I bought a separate Geiger tube, but I wanted to buy a complete Geiger counter because I can use it as a standard to align my home built one with. And this helped me find sources that I knew were radioactive so, so that when I test out what I'm building, I'll have an actual live source that I know is working and that my circuits are working. Okay, thanks for listening to this introduction. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.